Right. So we're going to view another Douglas production. He's still unranked. He's still playing against, I don't know, people. Do people things. We got the Karthus vs. Zen matchup. Uh, Karthus running exhaust, as he's wont to do, even, even against champions who aren't assassins. Pretty standard. The quality's a little potatoey. We'll get to that in a sec. Uh. So what we have here on runes, I don't think is optimal for what we want. <clears throat> Out of a friend. So match history. Played with you last. This was the Carthus ranked match. Spoilers, he wins this one. And take a look at the runes and mastery setup real quick. Max Q level and W. Maxi second, good. Uh, we do have the wrong ones, that's right, I remember you telling me this. Okay, we have some weird-ass runes that aren't going to help us at all. Masteries, we are forgoing Butcher and Feast, which would help us immensely in this lane, especially against the Zed here, who's going to poke us out with his combo. And in generally just being really good. Uh, instead, we have extra points in... Devastating Strikes, which is okay. Sorcery, which is whatever. Cane Blade, which doesn't really do anything on Karthus. And Double Edged Sword. Pretty much I only get Double Edged Sword on EDCs. Even then, it's not like... Greatest. It's fine. But... Uh, Enchanted Armor is awful. Even when people go 2190. Uh, usually just go block, unyielding, recovery, veteran scars, and juggernaut. We just skip these altogether. Uh, we might get tough. We get tough skin when we're jungling, or what have you. And but enchanted harbor is not so good here. Um, fleet of foot's fine. Meditation's fine. Strength of spirit's fine. In this matchup, I might go twenty one nine zero. Uh, but it'd be. Just as fine going 2109 and getting extra mana and health regen off of it. Uh, get a point in Alchemist here and Culinary Mastery. Or culinary Master, rather. It's so good. Biscuits are so good. Uh, and fill in the rest of it with Summoners inside here. Okay. Uh, we'll discuss your build path in, when we get to it. I don't necessarily like it as much. We only we only have a few items here. Trinket comes in at some point. Um, I think I prefer tier Aroa over the tier staff. This game, just because you get the additional health asap, you don't have to wait for the tier to stack. And we'll get to that in a minute. <sighs> okay. As for laning itself, there's not much for you to do outside. You can try to harass him, but that doesn't really put on the kill pressure you want. Volibear can try to come in. As long as his W's up, Zed should just be really safe from you. You don't have a lot of CC, and your damage is quite dodgeable early. Ganking mid should just be a farm fest from your point of view, for the most part. Uh, we'll end up seeing you missing a bit of CS as I skip forward here. Alright, let's back up to the start of this line. As you can see, we have the wrong runes on. Uh, it doesn't come to much. We're a bit tankier than we normally are. Doesn't matter. Okay, so first thing we do when we get into lane is... We want to make sure we hit level 2 first without shoving it so far that we're vulnerable to ganks. We do not do that here. It's fine to concede the level 2 in a matchup 
where we're at a strict damage disadvantage early. But Karthus with his Q cooldown almost never is. Whisk is trying to harass him, which is fine if we can get lucky and harass him out of lane. But he started Longsword Pots, it's going to take a long time for that to happen. Uh, assumably, he also has something like Feast, which makes it even more difficult. And I closed the match history. Uh, so, is that Control T or something? This tabs, match history. Yeah, did it. So you can always go to uh, na.op.gg to figure out what's going on, or Lil Nexus hit, or anything. He's got Lifesteal Quince. Good, good. He doesn't have these, which are interesting, so he's good. It's a bit more aggressive. Uh, pushing him out of lane is going to be difficult. It should be really difficult. Interestingly enough, he also goes 21-0. Blade Foot's fine on him, so it's fine. Runic Affinity is not very good anymore. So anyway, he's shoving it in for us. He hits level 2 now. This is where his poke should really start coming in. There it goes. And we're going to miss a bunch of the CS, aren't we? We focus a little too much on harassing him and let you have problems figuring out how to see us while harassing. Nice enough, though, we hit level 2 without anything major happening in the lane, outside of him getting poked a bit. Uh, the lane's... creeps are still finding the way into the tower, and annoyingly enough. But the lane's nice and frozen in front of your tower, so it has to be really careful. Good on Zed's part to ward the top side, seeing how that's normally where a juggler would be. Your Vola Bear has not gone blue yet. He's really something else. Uh, this gank by Vola Bear is actually a little dangerous. If you don't have... He's counting on you to exhaust him. Zed has a very real possibility to all in him here with Ignite at this HP. We won't see it happen though. Then just W's out, and perhaps unnecessarily, if he just walks up top, he doesn't need to do that. Alright, so Lane's pushing against him, or against you rather, at the 3 minute, 3.30 mark. This is generally when junglers have bought and are looking to influence the lane. It's really dangerous be pushed up, especially as an immobile mid at this time. Uh, it used to be way worse when people could go from blue to red and then gank, because this would be the time that you had to ward against it. Uh, now with the jungle paths being a bit more uh, unforgiving, it's like, these guys still haven't backed it, which is amazing to me. And I'm not super familiar with Maokai, but around this time you have to be worried about where your lane is pushing. Uh, Zed, by pushing it early and you allowing him kind of to push it in early, means he gets to bounce it off this tower and back to here. I don't know if he did that intentionally. Uh, at this ELO, probably not so much of a plan. But you are correct that you have to ward one of the sides. And seeing how Volibear went and just, in general... Warding top's fine here. Warding bottom would make sense too. Maokai can really be anywhere at this point. Uh, both bottom and top are sufficiently pushed up, and soon you are going to be. All three of, our, your, of Blue's lanes are possible to be ganked. Once Volibear gets this blue here, you should really look to take Scuttle to provide additional protection. Your job right now is to shove it into turret as quickly as possible. Uh, he's just giving. Ooh. Okay, we'll go over this. Let's back up a bit. Normal speed. We have exhaust up, we don't know where the mount is, but we have a ward against him if he's top. We are leaning to the side of the Vola Bear, which is good. Uh, and to the side that we have warded, which is good. So, assumably, if there's trouble, we get to do stuff. Right now, 
worried about being pushed up so far on a Karthus against someone with a lot of damage and ignite. Okay. So, what we do here, we decide the wall is a little bit off, and I think you actually end up hitting him with the wall in this placement regardless. We're looking to kite him instead of necessarily all in him. His passive is about to kick in and chunk us really badly. Yeah. Our exhaust is quite late. And we don't defile early. We need to commit to being dead. And then we miss the last Q just barely. It's a little unfortunate. An early exhaust would have saved us. Or even a flash of his secondary blades would have done it. I think we win the fight if we flash the blades. Watch it again at normal speed. You're st you just stay in honor ridge. And flash. If you realize that the only way he kills you there is if he has blades up or gets another auto off and you flash that, that first blood is yours. Okay, so that's a little nuanced. We're behind the CS, we've given up a kill. What do we do? I think we pick up tier and armor. We just pick up armor, we don't have enough CS to do anything else. 16 CS at almost 5 minutes is not very good. Uh, 22 CS at almost 5 minutes isn't very good either. But it's much more closer to acceptable. You're really looking mid lane to have between 30 and 40 CS at 5 minutes. For like, perfect CS. Um, I think 40 is almost perfect. Interestingly enough, for Volley Bear goes poachers, don't ever go poachers. Especially on your mid Karthus, even if you wanted to. Those don't. Uh, we pick up some armor, which is all we can really do for the lane. Interestingly enough, he doesn't go for sustain. Uh, the Brutalizer means he's going to be very, very good in all ends. So we want to avoid letting his item speak for the lane as much as possible. I'm trying to dodge all this poke. If you haven't, you should type in chat that mid doesn't have summoners. This way Volar Bear, like, he's not really inclined necessarily to gank this lane, but as he W and Qs to harass you properly, you have a lot of options in forcing him into a really bad spot with this. I would have loved to see you sh see... Let's talk about this blue tag real quick. So Volar Bear starting blue. We have one, two, three, four minions. Each one of them worth anywhere between, say it's like 15 gold. This is 60 gold we're just going to miss out on. You really want to shove that in. We have to queue it, we have a time to queue it five times. Instead if we let him get it a little bit lower, and we turn on our E and cue the wave down, suddenly we don't miss that 60 gold and we don't have to walk in full view of said. Although he did work here. Now that we have the mana, we can just spam our little hearts out. Remember? Okay. Here's a trick with Karthus. See you in a second. If, for some reason, we screw up a CS like this. That's going to be in the tower range, right? What we can do is turn on our E if we know we're not going to get it with any other method. And we'll kill it instantly. The E damage applies instantly. There's a few of these you don't end up going. And if you place that Q a little bit over to the side, you don't hit this one and you get the solitary damage on this one. Practice placing your Q in such a way that you only hit the minion you want to see us, or the person. This one here is free. We're going to all in him, because he doesn't have flash. He's way too far up. Here we go walking back. He was already in defile range, and instead we like walk into him again. And then we flash? That just doesn't make sense. Okay, we're going to watch this game come in again. So Vola Bear is already rolling thundering in. Interestingly enough, 
Zed, d Zed positions himself in such a way that his shadow will actually accomplish what Volibear wasn't able to do. The Rolling Thunder is going to bring him back closer to danger now. Previously, it would, if he just waited for Volibear to throw him over the shoulder this way and then W, he'd be much safer. He doesn't do that, he messes up, and he gets tossed back into this wall. Okay, the wall doesn't quite hit him. We have Flash up, we have a summoner advantage. Zed, however, is up in levels. We end up missing a Q, uh, because of the flip, in time properly. When Zed ults, he's always going to show up behind his target. To the back of his target. I believe it's the back of his target, I'm going to be really good if it's not. Uh, walking for death. Leaves the shadow behind and dashes to target. Let me double check this. It's either on the opposite side of his target from where he came, or it's behind. Dashes behind enemy champion. Mm -hmm. USS blah blah blah. Whatever. Okay. So he'll dash to your back. Regardless of where he is. So you can set up a queue waiting for him here instead of where we had it before. I didn't mean to go back this far. But we'll watch it again. Get some nice harass on him. Interesting enough, despite these wards, he still gets hit. Wall works out. Missed that. We weren't even close with that queue. That was just bad reaction on your part. Heals. You. We have another Q down here. Seems like we're a little not paying attention. Okay. So right now he's going he's chosen to fight. And he he really should. He doesn't he has a decent amount of armor and he's level six to both of you guys. He doesn't have ignite, so trying to kill the Volibear probably isn't the best option. He knows you don't have exhaust, perhaps he miss He's not gonna like hit you properly here. Um the shurikens end up hitting the Volibear first, which is a little unfortunate for him. Right now, he's in Defile range. If we can kite him while remaining in Defile range, that's best. If we let him get into Auto range, it's bad. It ends up working out here because now he can't properly click the Volibear, although we end up flashing with no real reason to do so. And in fact, Volibear passive is going to make it so we can't properly be zeroed out in time. And we actually... Bolivar gets it with his bite. Okay, so we blew a flash for no reason. And we didn't really need to... We needed to exhaust a little bit faster before. A uh, little bad on the Zed for being pushed up so far. We end up shoving this wave into tower, which we want to do. We can see that otherwise it would shove in slowly and perhaps even freeze by the time Zed gets back. Going on our part. Uh, we're, with that kill, and assist, we're now almost even with Zed and Gold. We end up picking up a tier, stacking it base a little bit, that's fine. All well and good. Uh, let's discuss tier for a second. So this game is certainly a game that we want Zonia's Hourglass. And we want it relatively fast. Their only AP damage comes from Morgana. Primarily through her ult, because if you're getting hit by your binding, God help you. Um, and Maokai's AoE. Uh, let it be known, Maokai will try to dive you as much as possible. But it's really his ult damage that's going to do the most, I think. Um, he, might, he might get off, like, two of his uh, Qs and one of his saplings to do a decent amount of damage, but his ult's going to be the majority of it. Um, so we really want Hourglass. So we really want armor, we're looking to complete it. Normally against Zed, you either complete first or second, depending on what type of champion you are. There's some champions that just can't forego like a CDR mana item. Um, or if you're getting a scaling item such as Tier or a Rod of Ages, you really want to at least get the components of that first. If it's Tier, you just want to do that. So my argument here is... We want Hourglass first or second, because we're Karthus, we're going to get it second. Okay, it's really good on Karthus. 
We also have the option, if we're far enough ahead, is sitting on just the arm guard and getting double stacking items as Karthus normally do. Our decision here to only go one stacking item is fine, but I don't think tier is the correct one, and here's why. We have two champions here whose only purpose is to eliminate someone from a team fight. If they're unable to do that, they're grossly ineffective. And in essence, Zed and Fiora only win because they're able to get ahead and bully people and then pre present themselves in 1v1 situations where they can split push all day against someone who can't properly defend. So what's the problem with tier? Well, tier is most largely ineffective as a defensive item until it's upgraded to Seraph's Embrace. So while this tier is stacking until, say, the 22 minute mark, we don't get any combat sets out of this except for mana. Meanwhile, Rod of Ages, which you can complete at the 15 minute mark, the catalyst alone gives you some health, and the stacking health is very useful and will greatly, greatly complement our Zonias, even if we forget to use its active. So if we go Roa here, we get effective combat stats for the times where, when Zed is trying to snowball something, which I think is more important than the higher damage side upside of Seraph's Embrace. I would have loved to see double stacking items this game, I think it would have been very good against this comp. In fact, Karthus in general is pretty good against them. They only have one carry, one source of damage that can sit outside your range and do something. They have two people who have three people, four almost. Or doesn't really need to sit in range of you. But these two have to be in range of you to deal damage, and the Defile is just going to ruin them. If we had better farm, we could definitely go double stacking items this game. But in order to be relevant before the 25 minute mark, I think we only have to go one with this amount of farm. And I really think Row is the correct, is the better choice. Although we'll see Tier not being bad either. It's just we're getting to the point in the lane where Zed start still hasn't bought Life Steal, but he should have it soon. In which case, your Q poke won't do enough with just Tier because we don't actually have combat stats here. Our ults aren't going to hit for a while. And we don't have a ton of health. Okay. Okay. So, in better ELOs, people will know that your flesh is down. So he's more than fine to gank you here. However, you should also know that your exhaust is up. Okay. So we're going to watch this at slow-mo. This is a complete... Uh, let me turn this volume down so it doesn't sound too... We have a ganking path here. You're not exactly pushed up and vulnerable. He's for some reason going to blow flash. W and on to you. Okay. Good on you to turn the defile on. Uh, I would have liked the wall positioned lengthwise here so they can't just walk out here. I think they end up getting hit by it anyway. Like he is tanking forever with no armor on. He has suicided himself. That exhaust on the Maokai was incorrect. I believe it. I believe it to be an honest misclick mistake. Uh, I don't think I need to go into why exhausting the Maokai, who's about to die to tower, is a mistake. Um, and if I remember correctly, you almost pick up a double here. Uh, I don't know if you were trying to move away from him or move back in range of his shadow. We end up doing that. And because he sticks around, you almost get to kill him with the ultimate. Really close. If we exhaust that as soon as his ult goes off, I think we have a much... We might be able to pick up a double here and still live. If they're diving you, just kite back, kite back. Good on you here. W's a little off. 
Also, at this point, Zed can't stay here at all. Um, if you land another Q combined with a tower, ult goes off, so I don't think we have to walk up here. I think we just need to walk backwards to safety, because he can't remain here. I mean, he has to press R to dash back to his shadow. Instead, we end up walking up. He gets an auto off. He gets a knight off. And we get popped here. If we had exhaust on him, we don't take as much damage. We don't have to walk up in order to try to trade. So that's that's ideally what would happen. Once you exhaust the wrong target, however, you kind of have to hope for a 2v1 trade. And so I guess you have to walk up into him and hope to land as many cues as possible before the ult goes off. This is really unfortunate. I don't see Volibear ever getting ganking a Morgana. Or a Morgana lane in general. She has Black Shield to prevent the flip. She has Binding in general. Don't see it. I don't know why he would waste his time down there. They already have a decent lead bottom. Really like to see him snowball top harder, actually. Yor does terribly when she's behind. And remember, they have two very good split pushers that they'd love to get going. They don't seem to be able to do. So Maka, I know Flash, type it to your team. I don't think you have. Doesn't matter. We're gonna miss a bunch of the CS. Don't even bother trying to queue there, instead we go for the greedy 4Q in the back lane here. I'm missing the CS that matters. We're just gonna auto this, that's fine. Okay. So, we still don't have flash. Luckily for us, the Zed is doing a, a service and pushing it into tower constantly. He could really make it dangerous for you by just letting you push out with your Q, which is in position to just hit the one minion you want to last hit all the time. I'll leave you in a vulnerable gank spot. This whole lane has been here, pretty much because Zed is hitting minions every time he wants to do something. He could have left that there and positioned the lane here, and instead he just wastes spells trying to last hit it. You should be looking to play a little defensively, we have a ward up here to see people coming in. Unfortunately, Maokai doesn't seem to know that. Zed should really be looking to get his poke off on you without that, or to roam to a different lane. We're gonna miss a lot of this too, because we failed to set it up properly. Now watch this come in. Let this get hit twice, and then queue it. We do not. And we end up hitting everything here and messing up the CS. Planning out your CS in this laning phase as it hits tower is the reason why you miss most of these. You end up going so heavily on the harass, especially on Arthas here, that you kind of tunnel vision on that instead of getting the CS here. Uh, in general, so the standard basis for how much gold you trade or health in harass is is given by the health pot. So for 35 gold, you heal 150 points of damage, if I'm correct. Health pot league. Health PT. Health pot. Health potion. Score 150 health. So that means for 35 gold, which is approximately 3 creeps. Let's, let's actually check the creeps while we're here. Uh, get out. Oh. Minions. Minions. We don't need lore for minions. While we're here, we might as well check everything. Score. Really doesn't have gold. Okay, here it is. So melees seem to give 19 to 20. Casters here give only like 15. Siege tend to give 40. Supers give 40. Okay. 
So about 20 gold for melees, something like 17 for casters. If you can't deal 150 damage, sorry, you have to deal more than 75. Hmm. If he picks up two minions and sustains a health pot worth of damage, he gets out even. So if you can't, if you're dealing only like a hundred damage and you're missing all of this CS for it, it's just ineffective for you. You're almost, unless you can chunk him out in such a way that he, he loses more gold than you're losing harassing him, it's not worth it for you. Does that make sense? I'm not really sure if I explained it properly, but before we go into this Fiora killing herself on you, um, in fact, I think I think you end up flashing here. And it's just bad. So we have a Fiora who's going to flash on you, but let me finish my point from earlier. I don't know if I explained it well enough, but the moral of it was, you spend too much time harassing her minute amounts of damage that aren't going to amount to very much. And so you should be focusing on getting the guaranteed gold and advantage that you would miss by using abilities elsewhere. Okay, so Fiora is 0-2 with a TM it and is two levels down on you. You have a defensive item, but not much in the way of combat stats for damage, uh, outside of the enough mana to leave an E on. Uh, she should know relatively well that you're old sub. She, they're probably not communicating well enough for flash, but okay. So she's going to flash for you, because she feels she needs to make a play. She is correct that if red team does nothing, they are just going to get raffle stomped. Mid is ahead on you. The enemy that is is in fact ahead on you, but not by a significant margin. Not by as much as Wukong is on this girl, or this double killed Graves is now on Jinx. So while she's correct that she needs to make a play, this play is just too ambitious. As soon as you see her flash onto you, your first instinct sh should be to try to disengage. Uh, unfortunately, walking down into here. Leaves you vulnerable to the Z around this point. So yeah, we're going to try to wall this off and hit her, and then kite back towards our Volley Bear, who's unfortunately really low. Ugh. Maybe he's... but if he has passive up, he should be fine. Okay. So we don't... we end up flashing during the duration of her ultimate, which brings her with us. I think we also, unfortunately, Missed, and I went a little too far back. I think we missed the wall on her too. Not that big of a deal. She shouldn't be able to kill us anyway. My point is, I don't think... If we think we need to flash, flashing when we did is bad. Because we bring her with. Or you should have come on sooner. I don't think Zed needed to flash here. If you still had flash up, or had flashed after her alteration, she has no gap closers to close in on you anymore. As soon as he flash ults on us, we should consider ourselves dead and try to position in such a way to kill them. Wow. So she gonna die. Yeah, okay. Do I end up trading one for one? Not bad. A little errant on the flash and the wall initially. The wall ends up not mattering because she ends up ulting on us anyway. Just go on her part. Uh, but the flash should wait till after her ultimate comes up, or she just realize that we, she's not dealing enough damage to really endanger us. We end up getting boots two here. That's okay. That'll help us keep distance. Oh yeah, you end up getting this kill on Maokai. Let's discuss this for a bit.
He is out of your range now. You're up in six seconds. He should have all the time in the world to recall, should he start recalling now. He... So, since he's out of your vision now, assumably, hope he is, he can still recall now and you can't do anything. He's out of your vision for like a full second. You, sh it is, I think it is greedy for you to try to go for this ult, but it ends up working out because he really delays going back. Because of that, he doesn't give him the fountain, you end up getting the kill anyway. Okay. Just in general, I don't think that ult works. Rampage. A little bit of a shame. Shut down. Not not a shame that you got the kill, it's a shame in the sense of good taste. If I remember correctly, there's only one thing left on this video that I wanted to look at, which was the fight around the dragon that comes up soon. I think Fuller Bear does for him. There might be two more fights and one of them's that dragon. Doing this real quick. I'm watching here because Karthus has nothing else to do. Top lane is carrying you. Bot lane is carrying you. We're really weak on our CS front. We haven't started scaling at all. We have 60 gold, 60 CS at 13 minutes. We've missed numerous opportunities to get the gold we wanted. If the lane wasn't pushed in all the time, I'd recommend taking wolves and raptors. It's It's been more difficult in this Ed matchup, and honestly we've been dead for so often that it's not to recommend anything like that. This girl's just dead. She ends up, interestingly enough, pausing, so we'd miss a Q. It's irrelevant in the long run. I don't know if we need to waste all the mana on uh, the file at a certain point, but that's that's really nitpicky. All right. So here's a fight I dislike. If you were doing that thing again where she jumps in on two people while one and four with no damage, and she is jumping in on the person who's just been straight killing her, and you. Is defensive so this wall is really bad she can't be she can be hit by your aoe in terms of like damage ticking but not by the wall this wall is terribly placed wukong goes in does wukong things you now don't have mana let's, let's just go back over this in slow-mo so we're low on mana we don't really want to fight, but this bitch gonna come over the wall anyway. We turn on E reflexively, it's going to hit her while she's up in there. Kind of. It's not going to do a lot right now, because we haven't scaled at all. Right now, Defile is kind of just a waste of mana, unless we're dying in an important spot. And we... Oh god. And... Ends up eating so much of our mana... Right now we have like 600 mana. Just fucking start eating through it here. And she's not even in range from here on out. We could turn it off here and it'd be fine. But there's no one in range of this defile right now. And it's preventing us from landing Qs later in the fight. So now it should just be Q City. Q City, Q City, Q City. At this point, we need to decide whether we're going to walk in here and die with them so we can get mana, or we're just going to try to walk out. We're going to walking a little bit too close. We can queue from a much more effective range. And we're just going to die here. We got our mana back. We ain't going to kill anyone else. Though. Might as well try to get some CS. <laughs> Doesn't seem to happen. Oh, well. So because we left the file on for a while, we don't get to really do much else. But I was hitting a total of zero targets while I was on for a bit. 
Being almost finishing the zonias. It's a little late. Uh, the kills are really helping out. You died quick. Looking elsewhere on the map, Graves is really far ahead and has decided to build lifesteal sector. Uh, top is going for pieces of smaller items. I really hope that's a black cleaver instead of a trinity, although trinity is not bad on Wukong. Similarly, the Fiora, while behind, is starting to build towards your car core and should kind of enter like hyper farm mode taking a bunch of camps while she has some lifesteal uh zed interestingly enough decided to finish off his gun his yomus i don't like that at all not exactly like i mean sitting on cutlass is fine i just think he's gonna need less whisper yomus will you almost will basically negate the arm blit, the armband here. Armlet, whatever it's called. Arm guard. Arm guard is the word in this in this game. Your exhaust is up. He can't do very much to you right now, but you can't do very much to him. I think he gets baited in here. He does. Nothing going on. You can play a bit more aggressively than normal. So we got all this poke under tower that's basically not going to do anything because he has cutlass and some health pots. If you can just take these while he's elsewhere, you can really get ahead. You're like the perfect champion to do it. Also, following him roaming, not a great idea. You don't actually have vision over here, as far as I can tell. Okay, you have vision here. If he notices you walk down, because he has vision in here, and just camps right in the bush just out of sight. He's out of vision now. You don't know where he went. You assume he's going bottom to help here, but if he ends up walking on here, you kind of have to face check that. And if he dodges the queue by just being out of range, if he has a vision in ward here, you have problems. Roaming on Karthus is really, really Chancy. He's a type of champion where if he gets caught out in the jungle, luckily you knew where their Malachi was. And if you had ult up, you'd kill him again. But you do have ult up, you just don't realize it. Realize that you have the kill opportunity. Um, Roman and Karthus is generally just an awkward situation all around. Okay, we get W's off, we get it on two people. We don't turn it off right away. We end up bolting here late. Attention to the damage about to come down. <laughs> Somehow just not getting hit by that. Cute. See, that was a good time to defile. We hit two targets with it. We finally had some AP, so it actually does something. Uh, I don't think our... I don't really notice our Q placement. In general, it's fine. I think we ended up blowing exhaust for that, huh? Who did we exhaust? Okay, we can skip ahead. So we come in, we get a good wall, they get trapped in your AP. We end up exhausting the Fiora who doesn't do anything. Yeah, definitely don't exhaust her. I think he also had an opportunity. We gotta see where he ults. Yeah. Okay, so this is old shadow. He can press R any time and come back to it. There, if, as this dash comes in, you should be pressing R to come here and kill you. You should not be anywhere near the shadow at this point. This is his best escape route, and coincidentally, since you walk up to it, his best chance of getting a kill. He doesn't pay attention to it properly. And a better Zed will punish you for that. And interesting enough, this. Okay, so I think we exhausted the wrong target there, and then we didn't worry about the shadow that he left up. We finished Zonius here. But it does seem like we really needed to use exhaust in that fight. Ugh. I guess... 
the Zed's the real damage throwing on this. You ain't gonna do shit. Mm -hmm. You got a little spectator bug here saying that you're still under ignite. And given trubisms. Yeah, well. Now they're gonna surrender in like two minutes. Let's see what else we can get out of this. He's finally building towards Bork. No one's really a high health target. So, outside of all the bear, but he's not really trying to go on. Oh, I really would have liked Last Miss Bear. It'll help against Graves passive, who he really wants to dive, since diving you is uh, risky, since you deal defile damage in an AoE and have Zonius at this point. I don't know how far along our tier is at this either. We could be spamming more in this section. Unfortunately, right now we don't have side camps to do, but we could at least spam queues around here to just build the stack the tier better. I know we're just kind of wandering aimlessly for this game to end. And end its shell. I don't remember if we have another dragon fight. I think we do. Morg doesn't seem to be interested. Ooh, we get all in here. Good, Sonyas. Ooh. Yeah. Not a bad fight. Let's see if we can see anything better in slow motion. Uh, did I go too far back? I probably did. Oh well. So at this point we have all of our team down beneath us. Zen makes a good attempt to try to come back. Walking this way is really bad. We don't need to face check this. Perhaps you're aware that you can outplay this guy, but in general this isn't the greatest. Uh, walking down towards Dragon, towards the parts of the map where the rest of your team is, is better. Uh, I don't think we wall properly, and in fact, Zed messes up by going with his combo before trying to put on a death mark. He should really just try to death mark you if he's going to all in here. You end up zoning using the death mark, that's fine. He spends way too long just tanking damage here. He gets off. You get two ticks off Defile off here. Uh, he should wait for you to Q, and then dash back to the Shadow. You end up queuing, or queuing up a Q a bit late. Uh, at this point, he has his item, he should do that. He never activates his item. You should just be dead. If he activates this item, you die. Now, depending on when he does activate the item, uh, you might be able to trade the kill. And we're going a little bit too far. Once more, once more. He makes a huge mistake here by blowing his W. He's forced not to retreat because of this wall that ends up not hitting him. Um, and he... He burns everything but his W. So, the death mark that's not going to work. He actually doesn't have proper cooldowns for a shuriken. Yeah, if he goes splits here. If he goes splits here, he kills you and gets away before you kill him. At this point, chasing him is greedy as fuck. As soon as you land that one Q, he has to, but... 
before then. It's just bad. It seems like you're a little unfamiliar with what Zed does. You're not respecting his shadows at some point. Um, particularly the shadow healer spec of his ult, which you can go to at any time. If he was better with his... His shadow play seems okay. The fact that he burned his W shadow to engage, rather than using the ult to clear the distance using the W to chase on your potential flash, it's really bad. Um, you should really know with his Zonia's up, he's going to have to burn your Zonia's and then use W and or flash or ghost blade to change. Instead, he does none of that, and you get the chance to kite him a little bit. It's something that looks like you did relatively well. But upon further review, it's it's really him outplaying himself. And you properly punishing him for not activating the items. This tier did nothing. All game. Uh, you could argue with this low amount of farm, you're not finishing Roa either, and you wouldn't have had the hourglass up. But you can just sit on the armor and have Roa stacking. I think it's... I don't think some of these fights are as close as they would have been. This is just so much more. Uh. Okay. So, things I noticed this game. Uh, perhaps the build path wasn't the best. We saw some poor planning of fights in your head. Which resulted in missed cues. Uh, it's a similar thing to when you're trying to CS. You gotta pre-plan the fight in your head. Now uh, there are times when Zed comes in and you're like walking too close to some of his shadows. Although, if he was more patient in the lane, you might see him try to bait you in and not shove you under tower constantly force you out to farm a little bit, but apparently shoving you into tower made you lose enough CS due to your poor planning of CS. Uh, there are a couple times you like walked away from lane or just weren't CSing that you should have been. Notably there was the time you walked bottom or around this. We're walking down bottom, we're not doing anything here. People are already like dead or leaving. Dead. Dead. Graves is pieced out. This entire room was just... They have like four down here. We're starting... We're roaming late on a Zed who has Mobies. We're not catching. And especially as Karthus, we're just looking to farm up. We're not even like... We haven't even finished an item at this point. We end up getting the kill back here, exhausting like an awkward person. And then, yeah, he, Zed should have his dead here again. Ghost Blades, good on his part. Exhaust, the person who's already been dealing damage to us. She doesn't actually get any more damage off on us after the exhaust. He had so much time to press this R. He like handed it to him too. You would have died to your ult. Because you hadn't started channeling yet. But he had you. This 79 CS not acceptable. We'll see it when we go over your Casio game as well. You just need to work on your CSing and some some of your team fight. But 